Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the Triple Studios channel. Today we're going to be making a two-player football game in Scratch. Let's jump straight in. First thing we want to do is uh, I'm going to delete the sprite, and we want to go to backdrops, uh, and we're just going to color this in to a nice green color to match the uh, ambience of a football pitch. I'd say that's pretty good. So now what we want to do is create a sprite. We're going to paint another sprite. I'm going to make this red. And we're going to drag it into the middle. And we're going to set the size to 50, 0, 0, and then let's say minus 235. There we go. And I'm going to rename the sprite to goal 1. Right. Now I'm going to go to events, I'm going to play click, motion, go to minus 300 minus 235 on the X and 0 on the Y. Right click on the sprite, duplicate it and it will automatically, or it should rename it to automatically to goal 2. What I want to do is go to on the set on the X 235, on the Y set that to 0. So now there should be complete opposite sides of the pitch. And on here, instead of setting it to minus 235, I want to set it to positive 235. Then we're going to go to the costumes and we're going to change the color to blue. It doesn't have to be blue, it's just I want to do red versus blue. Now we're going to create players. So because we're having a two player football game, I'm going to actually rename this to two player football. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm now going to draw our players. So I'm going to just create a circle here and I'm going to make our player red. I'm actually going to like lighten the saturation a bit just make it like 75 and then I'm going to grab a text and I'm going to put one in there so now we're going to set the player to 25 let's say now we're going to set here them to minus 190 and 0 on the Y now I'm going to go to I'm going to rename the sprite I'm going to call it player 1 I'm going to go to events, when green flag clicked, motion, go to minus 190 on Y. Now we're going to go ahead and right click, and actually wait, no, let's just do the movement first. So let's go to events, when green flag clicked, forever, if then, and we're going to go sensing, key space pressed, we want to go to, scroll all the way down to W. Now make sure player 1 is the WASD because that means player 1 will be on the left side of the keyboard meanwhile player 2 will use arrow keys we want to go to motion and we want to change X by minus 5 it doesn't have to be minus 5 I'm saying minus 5 because it's an alright movement speed I think and it suits it quite nicely so what we want to do now is right click on the if then block, duplicate that, W, you want to scroll up and find S, okay, wait it's not minus X, sorry it's minus Y, I've got my things muddled up, so we want to change Y by 5, positive 5 if we're on W, put that in there, and if it's on S, we want to set it to minus 5. Now I'm going to duplicate both of these, put them in, and I'm going to change the W to a A, and the S to a D. I'm going to get rid of the change Y. I'm going to go change X. A, we want to set to minus 5. Duplicate that, put that in there, and we want to set that to positive 5. So now as you can see, the player will move around. So now we can duplicate this uh, and it's renamed itself to player 2, which is nice. And we want to set it to positive 190 and 0 on the Y. I'm going to now edit the costume, so I'm going to click on this, I'm going to set it to the same shade of blue as this one, which is 62, I'm going to go here, and set this to 62, and there we go, I'm also going to change the 1 into a 2, make sure it's centered, and now we have our two players, lovely. So when I want to go on to the player 2 and we want to change it the W to up arrow, S to down arrow, A to left arrow, 
and D to right arrow. So now you can now move around on the player 2 and player 1 at the same time. Uh, so, oh yes, make sure you want to change the minus 190 to positive 190. And as you can see, they spawn on completely opposite sides of the field. Now we're going to make the ball and program the ball physics. So what we want to do is choose a sprite. You can export it if you want. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to grab the soccer ball sprite, change it to 50. 50, I'm going to set it to 0, 0 on the Y. So now it's in the middle of both players. Now we want to go to events. When green flag clicked, go to 0, 0. Oh, not a comment. Uh, one green flag clicked again. Forever. If then touching player one, we want to t uh, point towards player one, and we want to turn 180 degrees clockwise. It doesn't have to be clockwise, it can be anti-clockwise. Make sure it has to be 180 degrees because that means the ball will face forwards. And now move five steps. So now as you can see, the ball will now move in any direction that we can move it if, if the player is touching it. However, that is only for player one, so all we need to do is right click, duplicate, touching player two. And now as you can see, player two. Ooh, wait, yes, my bad. We need to point towards player two also. So now player two can now touch it. Both of them can. Lovely stuff. So now what we want to do is program the ball. So if it's touching the goals, it increments the score by one. So what we want to do is go to the ball. We want to, when green flag clicked, forever. If then sensing touching goal one, we want to cast message one goal, um, and we will deal with that in a second. However, let's continue doing this for now. Uh, now we want to go to variables, rename this variable to one score, and we're going to make a new variable. I'm going to call it team two score. Change team to score by one because if it if the ball touches team one's goal it's a goal for the opposite team all right so now we need to just right click duplicate that touching goal two team one score increments by one so now let's do this let's do large readout drag that in the top right large readout drag that in the top right also. So now uh, if we just move our player out of the way, move the ball into there, you can see it's just infinitely going up. However, to fix that, all we have to do is go to events, when I receive goal, go to zero, zero, and we need to do the same for every single one. So all you need to do is just grab this code and drag it into player one and player two. But instead of zero zero, we want it to be these coordinates where it's where the player starts. So drag them in like that. So as you can see, if we move our player out of the way, drag it over here, it now restarts. But you know, if we are moving the players constantly. And we just restart it you know the players continue moving we don't want that we also want to change the score back to zero so i'm just going to go to backdrops when green flag clicks set team one score and set team two score to zero so now as you can see here this is better increments by one lovely stuff so now we want want to do is when I go to player one, when I receive goal, wait five seconds, 
let's not do five seconds, let's do two seconds. Actually, let's go repeat five times. We want to go to that position and we want to wait zero seconds. I believe this should lock the player in place. So if I just get the ball over here, it did not. All right, let me try to figure this out. All right, so what we're going to do is now program so when the player scores, when either of the players score, we want them to stay in that position for a couple of seconds after they score. So what we want to do is make a new variable. I'm just going to call it lock. You don't have to be call it lock. You can call it uh, after goal or anything that's related to what happens. Otherwise, you won't know what happens. And we want to go to events. When I receive goal variables, set lock to one. And we want to wait two seconds. Uh, and then we want to set lock back to zero. So now if we score, I'm going to keep moving. Oh, wait, I forgot to program the most crucial part. That's my bad. What we want to do in the movement script here, we want to disconnect those, grab an if then else, go to operators, grab an equal to variables, grab the lock variable, set that to one, drag the movement into the else. So what this does is if the lock is, I'm not going to say enabled, so if the lock is enabled, do anything. So now let's do that experiment again. Uh, I think the lock is set to one, which is not good. So it is. All right. So what we want to do is when green flag, when green flag clicked, let's do that in the backdrop just to make it look nicer. Set lock to zero. So as you can see, you know, we can now move because the lock isn't enabled. If we score with our secondary player, we keep moving. We can move. We can't. Now we can. Lovely stuff. So what we want to do is do the same thing. So we want to grab this. We're going to grab this bit here. We're going to drag that into player two. Drag that down to the bottom. We're going to do the same thing. So disconnect this. Control. If then operators equal to variables lock equal to run. Drag that in else. Now we won't be able to move from either players until we can. There we go. Now we can add some sound effects as well. So if we do goal, uh, if we go to soccer ball or football ball, whatever it is, we want to go to choose sound uh, effects. Should be a cheer. That is very loud. I'm going to soften that down quite a bit. And we want to play sound goal cheer until done. And that is how you make the two player football game in Scratch. If you guys did enjoy, please do leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.